Hi everyone, Darwin here. Welcome back to the Toady Wee Workshop. Well, a few years ago I made my Lowrider 2, a CNC designed by Ryan over at V1 Engineering. Last year Ryan designed an upgrade machine called the Lowrider 3. An evolution from the Lowrider 2, the machine provides a little bit more stability and that should translate into faster speeds when you're trying to cut something. So it's time for an upgrade. First we zip on over to v1e.com, click on the link for the Lowrider, and you can see everything's described here on how to build it. You can buy the parts from Ryan, or you can self-source. Printed parts and flat parts are listed separately, and there's a section on the differences between the Lowrider 2 and the Lowrider 3 if you're going to do an upgrade. The parts I'm going to work on now are the YZ plates. These are the large plates on the side, and they can be made out of things like MDF or plywood, but I've come into possession of some 12mm acrylic and I've foolishly decided to make them out of this. I bring the DXF file that I've downloaded in my CAM software, define the holes and the parts, and some drill holes, set the depth to 12mm and export that. So there are a number of reasons this thing was so difficult to do, but the first one might be the single flute cheap bits that I got off of Amazon, not the nice clean single flute bit you can buy from Ryan. And so even though I was trying trochoidal milling, which does small rotations as it cuts through and supposedly reduces heat and the impact on the bit, I still ended up with a lot of funky crud hanging off the bit and sometimes even a broken bit. I got some really good advice from the V1E forums and the key thing here is the heat. There are a few types of acrylic, some are hard, some are soft. This is probably a softer one and either you have to use some active cooling or you just gotta go really fast and really shallow. So I finally figured out a process where I could do these really fast, really shallow cuts and make it all the way through 12 millimeters without melting anything. It did involve cleaning the bed every layer and brushing out the debris before starting the next layer. That's okay. It was time to start cutting the part. So I start with cutting the holes on the inside. That way the piece is stable all the way through the piece before you cut out the final part. Every layer, I would back it off, brush it out, and clean it up. Each layer didn't take a lot of time. You can see here it's quite quick. But each layer is only one millimeter deep, so each cut profile took 12 layers. And that was a fair bit of cleaning. It was working though, so I kept at it. Every time I finished a piece and started the next one, I'm thinking, man, if I make a mistake on this one, I've ruined the whole project. The outside cut was the longest cut, and I was a little worried it wouldn't make it all the way through without gumming up with some melted acrylic, but it was the same process. It made it through, it was fast enough, and in the end, I got a good cut. I'd put 2mm by 2mm tabs into the cut profiles. So the tabs are the last thing holding the pieces in place once all the cuts were made. And they're very easy to remove with an oscillating saw. Overall it was looking pretty good and I thought, what could go wrong when I do the next one? So water is often used as a coolant in CNC machining and at a certain point I decided I'm going to try and spray some water on where the cut's going to go through or into the groove of a prior layer before the bit comes through and see if it made a difference. And it was fantastic. There was very little melting of the acrylic as it came through. Cleanup was a lot easier and the cuts looked great. Nice smooth sides that would require very little sanding later. The drill holes didn't benefit as much from the water, so I just stuck to my old routine. But I was feeling pretty confident I was gonna be able to do this with no mistakes when I headed into the last cuts of the project. Disaster. On the first layer cut, as a bit moved from an area where there was some water on the surface of the acrylic to an area where there was no water, the bit caught and the CNC skipped a few steps in the X direction. And what this meant was that there was a groove cut in the first layer of the acrylic that was offset from where it was supposed to be by a couple of millimeters. After I finished swearing, I continued with the cuts because I figured I'd come up with some solution later on to clean up the piece and hopefully I wouldn't have any more mistakes before this one was done. And it looks like other than that first bad cut, everything turned out fine. Well, by the time the cuts were done, I'd come up with a plan. I'm gonna tape this piece up and use some clear epoxy to fill the groove. Once it's cured, I'll sand it down. Hopefully I can get it smooth enough so that the acrylic piece looks clear again. The groove is only a millimeter deep, but so I'm pretty sure there isn't going to be any structural issues. Well, using the water on the second part made the edges pretty smooth. Uh, the first part had a lot of rough edges, so I had to do some sanding. 
Started with an 80 grit to get the tab bumps down and gradually moved up to 400 grit and with a final pass with a 800 grit. I wasn't aiming for full transparency on the edges so even though I've got uh, 1500 and 3000 grit sandpaper on the table there I didn't use them for the edges. I did the same process on the insides. Okay, now to deal with my mistake. I started with 80 grit again to get the surface flat and just gradually increased the grit count. The sandpaper I had from about 600 grit and up was waterproof, so I start using water there. That allows the dust from the acrylic to wash off and creates almost a paste as you're sanding. Finish the piece with 5000 grit. Considering this whole thing is going to be used on a CNC whose job it is to make sawdust, I think it turned out pretty good. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.